Here's some more pictures, aggregations on the mattress. Another one here. Uh, this is a mattress on top of box spring, and you can see right where they join, we've got a whole line of bed bugs. And you can see their poop and little guys on there too. This is the bottom of that box spring. The box spring is the number one place for, uh, for bed bugs to hide in, in most uh, home infestations. Your mattress is basically just a big pillow, but the box spring has lots of stuff going on inside. It's got springs, it's got padding, it's got wood, it's got metal, it's got lots of different kinds of fabric. Um, and then they can lay thousands and thousands of eggs in there. Um, so that's, that's their favorite place. So where are they hiding? Well, just about any place. Again, initially they start basically at the bed. And uh, later, if once the bed fills up, they'll move out into other parts of the apartment. Um, but as I said before, they like cracks and crevices, 16th of an inch, so like behind the baseboard, for instance, is a good place to look for bed bugs. Um, they also like folds and edges. They, they have little claws, so they're really good at climbing fabric. Um, and they're actually attracted to our odors, our body odors. So clothing that has been worn is attractive to them. And this is probably one of the things that's going on in hotels where people have dirty laundry in their suitcases and that attracts the bugs to it and then they take the bugs home with them. So anything that's been worn needs to be washed. Clothing that hasn't been worn doesn't have to be washed. If it needs treatment at all, it can just be put through a hot dryer. Because as I said earlier, heat kills all bugs at all stages, including their eggs. Um, we talked about mattresses, box springs, sofas and recliners. Wheelchairs are also important, especially if people are in a power wheelchair. Uh, if they're in a power chair, they probably spend most of their time in the chair because it's more comfortable and eat and transfers our pain. Uh, and so the chair will become infested and that's a problem because as they roll around, the chair becomes a distribution mechanism as well. Uh, here in Philadelphia, uh, I've discovered that radiator covers are also an important part bridge because nobody ever moves them. And in many cases, you can't even get at them anymore or you can't move them because they're painted to the wall or something like that. And so the bugs can get, in, get into behind the, the radiator cover and no one will ever find them there. So you want to look at all those hidden places. Once the bed fills up and there's literally no place for, mo for more bed bugs there, they'll start moving them around and they'll get into, into clothes and the closet and they'll eventually infest the entire apartment. So all these little circles, excuse me, on this diagram are these things. These are called climb-up interceptors. Climb-up is the brand name. They were the first to market and are still the most widely used. And it's really simple. The outside is rough and the bug can climb up it easily and then they get, they get stuck on the inside and they can't climb it. As I said, they have little claws so they're not good at climbing slip plastic. They're not like cockroaches, you know, which can climb glass. So they just get stuck in here, and you can find them. And so what, one of the things that Dr. Wong's lab did was they took these, and they put them all over these infested apartments in senior housing. I think there's like 16 of them in, in these apartments. And in every case, they caught bed bugs in every single one of these. Okay, including in the kitchen and the bathroom, which were two places where, until this paper was published, I would have told you you'd never find a bed bug. Okay. Um, but that's only, I mean, most infestations uh, contain less than 20 bugs when they're identified. It's so, in most cases, they're going to be concentrated in or around the bed.
So, although the bed bugs are not medically significant, they are psychologically very significant. Bed bugs will drive you crazy, easily. Um, and people tend to experience shame, uh, although they shouldn't, actually. There's no shame in getting bed bugs, because anybody can get a bed bug. The shame is when you can't get rid of them. Okay. But people are afraid that they're going to be blacklisted. Um, for instance, that they're not going to be able to go to the senior center, or that their doctor isn't going to want to see them. They're afraid they're going to have to throw stuff out. Uh, and in fact, we don't recommend throwing things out, and I'll talk more about that. So what happens is that they become reluctant to go out because they don't want to spread the bed bugs. They don't want other people to come over. And that creates social distancing, which can worsen de depression and make things even, even harder for people. Um, they're also afraid of uh, a lack of services. There's an understandable reluctance on care providers, uh, home health aides, uh, to work, to want to work in an environment with bed bugs, because they don't want to take them home with them, uh, and this can lead to some really dangerous situations. And in fact, what we explain to agencies and to care providers is that they need to just to develop protocols to uh, work safely with their clients who have a problem, not to exclude people based on their bed bug status. Excluding people based on their bed bug status may be a violation of the Americans with Disability Act. Um, and I'm just waiting for somebody to, to file a case in court about it. <coughs> um, so, Almost everything can be tr successfully treated. Remember, I, sh I showed you this Cornell book here about how to treat things. So almost everything can be treated, even though it can be hard when there's this much stuff. Because um, there's a lot of places here where bed bugs could be hiding. But there's one thing in this picture that I can tell you we're just going to have to trash. And that's all these VHS tapes here. because. The bed bugs could be inside the cassettes, and there's no way of finding out without breaking the cassette open, and by then you ruin it, ruin the tapes. So we, we might as well just throw all those out, um, and that's too bad. But most things uh, can be treated. Uh, recliner chairs are another thing that can be very difficult to treat because there's. They're complicated. There's a lot of, of mechanism inside a lot of upholstery. Uh, your great aunt's Victorian chaise lounge that's stuffed with horsehair, also impossible to treat because the, the bed bug could be inside, and there's so much you know room for them to lay eggs and to live inside that. Very very difficult to treat. But most things can be treated. So, um, you know, in the historic, in, until recently, most pest control companies gave out lists of preparation instructions that were filled, like would fill an entire page, and they want you to take the bed apart and lean it against the wall and empty all the dressers and wash everything, in the, every piece of fabric in the in the apartment, and and so on and so on. And the reality is that most people don't, in fact, follow those preparation instructions. Uh, many people cannot. Seniors physically cannot do that. Um, disabled people physically cannot do it. Single moms probably can't do it because they have, don't have the time or the atten you know, a bit of attention. Um, and in fact, if people try to do it, they, do, they don't do a very good job. And as I said, described earlier, um, what tends to happen is they tend to uh, disperse any bed bugs.